Have you ever wondered how to make your bedroom look expensive? I've recently stayed in a 5 star hotel room and to help you design your bedroom like a luxurious room. I thought I would do a design breakdown of my room to highlight all the big and small design decisions that come together to create a room of this caliber. Let's first have a look at this room. As you come in, you enter into a small corridor. On the left side there is a place for your key, which also activates the electricity in the room. On the right side there is a wardrobe where you can leave your luggage, your coat and your shoes. It also has a mini kitchen with a coffee machine and a small refrigerator. On the left side you have a small bathroom. And straight ahead you have the room with a massive king bed on the left side, a small couch and a writing desk on the right side. And that's what the room looks like. What colors should you choose for your room to make it look like a 5 star hotel room? Colors really are subjective, but if you happen to google 5 star hotel rooms, you'll notice that some of the predominant colors are white, beige, brown and black. This appears to be the consensus of what a 5 star color scheme is. Are these the only colors you can use? Absolutely not, and to be fair, some of these hotels do on occasion use a strong color but it is mostly to highlight a color reflected in the brand. So for example, Hotel Imperial in Vienna takes its design and branding from the Imperial Palace of Austria. So what you will see in the rooms is the use of the color red. Another color used sometimes is blue, either on carpets or walls. Generally blue feels more calming. It helps keep the mood of the room down and guests get into a sleeping mode faster. So picking colors for your bedroom can be inspired by this palette, but you can also just pick colors that you like. Make sure, however, to keep the number of colors low. Also, the materials are in a low number. We have one type of wood. We have the marble pattern in black and white. We have the carpet that matches in pattern with the little pillows on the couch. We have the wallpaper, the headboard of the bed that matches the chair, and finally the couch material matching the bed. All the furniture legs and fixtures are black. So there is a beautiful balance between hard materials like wood and marble and softer, more textured materials like the carpet and the pillows. A nice touch is also the wallpaper that has a textured look and feel to it. Shapes. What is also nice to see is the repetition of certain shapes throughout the room. First there is the repeating black line which you see in the frame of the paintings, the table lamp, the legs of the chair, but also the edges of the wardrobe. There is also the repeating circle or semicircle in the standing lamp, the coffee table, the table lamp, the desk and the little trash can. This repetition of shapes, colors and patterns throughout the room give a sense of unity to the entire composition. So playing this matchy-matchy game with your bedroom is worth it because it simplifies the design, making it easy to understand, but also it gives the space an overall sense of unity. Order and alignment. What differentiates a room designed by a professional from one designed by an amateur is also the sense of an underlying order. How the side tables match exactly the edges of the bed, that's not a coincidence. How the hanging light swings exactly over the middle of the side table, again, not a coincidence. The paintings hang exactly in the middle of the wall or over the center of the table. The upper edge of the TV niche matches the upper edge of the mini bar. How the height of the room's curtain board is exactly the height of the lower side of the wardrobe, that's also not a coincidence. You don't create order by chance, you plan for it. So if you want to make your bedroom look expensive, make sure there's a sense of order and alignment. Details. It's usually the attention given to small details that say how much thinking has been placed on the customer's experience. And it's often what truly differentiates a five-star hotel room from all the others. The first details that stand out to me are those of the wardrobe. The wardrobe has this black metal frame that goes along its edges. This helps with two things. It keeps the contrast of the wardrobe high because the older people get, the more contrast they need. 
And number two, they protect the edges of the wardrobe from looking bad after a lot of use. Because there are no handles on the doors, the doors are opened by pulling the edges. Similarly, the handleless drawers have a hook-like metallic edge that allows the fingers to open them, and at the same time, they protect the edges of the wood. Just like there is a doorstop preventing the door from slamming into the wardrobe and making it look worn off, there is a coat hanger stop which prevents coat hangers from slamming against the sides of the wardrobe. This prevents the wardrobe from looking bad after some time. Similarly, the area of the travel bag has these ripple elements that keep a small distance between the bag and the wardrobe. On one side, they prevent the bag from slipping off when interacting with it, and on the other, it prevents the open area of the wardrobe from looking worn out because of all the bags rubbing against it. Additionally, the bathroom is also pretty interesting. Firstly, the shower is as slim as one could make it, and it is at the same floor level with the rest of the bathroom. The only division one sees is the metallic frame that divides the straight floor from the slope floor in the shower, which allows for the water to drain. The sink is normal size, but the vanity is quite small, and that is to make the small bathroom feel more spacious without taking away from the comfort. There are also no drawers under the sink, but simply a protection cover of the sink installation, on which you find a towel rack. I found this to be a pretty smart move because due to the humidity in the bathroom, storage tends to look dingy after a while. So if you have a small bathroom, take a page from the design of a 5-star hotel room and opt for a protection cover made from wood with a beautiful towel rack to keep your small bathroom looking clean and spacious. By the way, if you guys love these ideas, I have a lot more online classes on Skillshare and Udemy on similar topics, so make sure to check the video description for more information. If we look at the floor plan, you can see that the room has very clear zones. There is an entryway storage kitchen area, there is a bathroom area, and then there is the bedroom area. Place the bed towards the back of the room where there isn't a lot of light and leave tables and small sofas closer to the window for daytime activities. Now, what is also important is that the circulation between them is comfortable. I do remember hurting my shoulder once in the corner of the TV in a three-star hotel room because there were literally just 30 centimeters or 11.81 inch left between the TV and the bed. Feeling comfortable in a room means not only having a comfortable bed and auxiliary zones, but also sufficient space to walk between them. Which is why the distance between the bed and the wall or a nearby furniture piece should be 80 centimeters. It can be reduced to 60 centimeters in areas where the circulation is a bit more seldom, like the other side of the bed if this is a one-person bedroom. It's very hard to feel like you're in a five-star hotel room if you have to squeeze yourself between furniture pieces in order to function normally. And the size of your bedroom doesn't have to be very big. The room here, if we exclude the corridor and the bathroom area, is 17.5 square meters, or 188.3 square feet. The following thing I want to talk about is lights. The lights in hotel rooms generally receive a lot of thinking, and I think it's worth talking about where the lights are placed and why they are placed there. Unlike a home bedroom, the lights are not in the center of the room, but all along the edges of the room. And if you think about it, that makes a lot of sense, because we are doing things along these edges and corners of the room, and never in the center, which would be over the bed. And so the lighting is focused there, where we need it the most. So, on the corridor, we have two lights in the middle, but also two lights over the wardrobe, shining over the minibar in the area where you place your luggage. You have ceiling lights along three edges of the room for atmosphere, you have a table lamp by the desk, and you have a standing light by the couch. You also have four lights by the bed, two hanging and two wall mounted. The hanging lights shine over the side tables and the focused wall mounted lights help you read at night without disturbing your partner. In the bathroom you have both lights in the ceiling and in the mirrors. So have a look around your bedroom and the important zones in it. Do they have sufficient light? Which zones might benefit of an extra lamp? Another really interesting aspect of the room are the light switches by the bed, which control every light in the room except for those in the bathroom. 
Every side of the bed has three switches. You have one universal light switch that turns on and off all the lights in the bedroom and the corridor area. The second switch is for ceiling lights. And the last one is for the individual lights shining over the side table. The focused wall-mounted lights by the bed have their own on and off light switches. Being able to control the lights from the bed is something very specific to four and five star hotel rooms. It is that extra bit of thought given to your comfort. You don't have to get out of bed to turn off all the lights before closing your eyes. The color of the lights also matters. In this case, it's a warm yellow. During the day, there is plenty of light coming from the windows, but at night, warm yellow lights help your body wind down and get ready for bed. Another way to control the light are the blackout curtains. This is an important detail of hotel rooms because people need to be able to sleep at any time of the day. So being able to control the light in the room and make the room completely dark is very important. So for your own bedroom, I would not necessarily recommend you place your light switches by the bed because you never know how its function might change over time. Perhaps instead of a master bedroom, you will have a children's room or an office one day. But what I would recommend is to have a central switch with different light setups that will help your body wind down and get ready for bed. Focus lights like a table lamp or a standing lamp help people who might share the bedroom with a partner. And indirect lights generally create a more diffuse and cozy atmosphere than direct lights can. About the hotel. For those of you who hung around waiting to know the hotel name, your waiting is over. It's Radisson Collection in Warsaw. I went to Warsaw with a different agenda, but the idea of the design breakdown came to me the day before I left. I took these shots in a hurry in the morning or in the evening, wherever I could find a bit of time. Normally I do such design breakdowns wherever I go, but I don't put them on video. I think as an architect you have an opportunity to learn not just from books, but from the works of other designers and architects and the already designed spaces around you. And doing these breakdowns helps expand my own design vocabulary. Alright, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Do let me know in the comments what was your favorite part. Take care and I'll see you in the next video.